Public Affairs very much thanks Rizidco, our sole corporate underwriter, for helping to make the production of this show possible. never been a supporter of you know black lives matter so to speak once again I, i'm telling you my general thoughts i'm not this is not how i would yeah, never, rule on any people, case general thoughts right um but i think that some of these prosecutors that have taken the soros money and that uh are letting everybody out and um not prosecuting violent crimes the way they should that they're a danger to america but by the same token people need to understand the role the, that's the executive branch the judiciary doesn't get to tell the executive branch how to run their office. You know, we may rule on cases that come before us, but if they want to let people out, typically we have no say in that. Yeah, but you they want to dismiss cases, Nolly Prost's case. But, they but, can do it and we can't do anything about okay. it. So did he have, did Kelly have enough? Did the state's attorney have enough of Lake County? Did they have enough to go in and ask the court to say, make a finding that this kid's a clear and present danger? He's an imminent threat. Yeah, they're, Put they're, something in the record so maybe it goes in the background check information that comes out, and then that works. Somebody does a background check, this comes out. When he Three years later, when he tries to buy a gun, he can't. Right. But that didn't happen. When he tried to right. buy a gun, there was nothing there. Right. What the hell well, went just, wrong here? So I mean, we, seriously. You, you got nothing wrong. Okay. But what I would say is that um, obviously— the uh, the ball's been dropped. I mean, there's got to be way more focus on this. And, and what what did we do wrong that allowed Highland Park to happen? So there's no question. We can't have we can't keep going down this road. You know, I mean, these are it's horrible the lives that were taken. It's horrible that this happened. But w what was specifically? And I haven't done a forensic on this yet. Should you know, we ban? I, should we ban all assault weapons? Is that the answer? Berkowitz is my name, and politics is our game. And we will be doing lots of politics and public policy and so much more because our guest today is running for the Illinois Supreme Court. This could be an immensely important election. We're talking to Mark Curran, who's the GOP nominee in the second district, running in the second district for the second district Illinois Supreme Court seat. And that is an open seat now and also running in in this election day in the third district uh running for this fall november 8 election is uh is justice michael burke now running in the third district he's on the second district in the sec he holds a second district seat now the short of it is short of it is folks democrats have the majority in the illinois supreme court to these two seats second and third viewed as purple seats open seats if the Republicans were to win both those seats, they would have, the Republican Party would have the majority of the, in, in the Illinois Supreme Court for the first time in 60 years. 60 years. Mark Curran, did I get that right? I think so. What about guns? Guns are a big issue now. We're taping this on, they're taping this on yeah. July 13th, nine days after the tragedy in uh, Highland Park. Right. The shooting on July 4th. Seven is it? Seven yeah. going to eight deaths, thirty-one injured. Yeah, I mean it's a, and, a uh, horrible, horrible. What was it? A saw tragedy. weapon used at least almost yeah. ninety shots in a few minutes. Is right. that right? Right. What do you got to say about that? What's the gestalt? Yeah, What's I mean, the gestalt on yeah. Mark Kern on guns and that incident. So what I would say is, is that um, the Second Amendment, you know, is what it is. It, it belongs to the people, not to the government. So if we're gonna make inroads or intrusions on the Second Amendment, there's always, there always has to be a balancing. You know, if we're going to apply strict scrutiny, then the Constitution says that, uh, in the cases that have interpreted the Constitution, say that we have to do that in the least... Uh, what, is the, what does the Constitution say about guns, specifically? Well, Second it, Amendment. Yeah, I you mean, know the, the, Second the Amendment language, the right to form a well, uh, militia. A well-regulated yeah, militia. Yeah, re well-regulated right? militia. Being but, what? Being necessary. Right. I'm reading this. Right. That's unfair. You're, you're yeah, not in front of you. I mean, but, but be, the, let's the just Bill of Rights... People. Let's just tell, I'm learning to just be quiet. You tell us what it means to you, the Second Amendment. Okay, so we know the... Ten, As your best you right. recall, what does it say and what does it mean? Okay, so Are they the same? Are they, are they the same? Yes. Yeah. Well, here's... Does here's, it mean what it says? What does it mean? What does it say? So the first Second. 10 amendments to the Bill of Rights were uh, given to the people. And they, those rights belong to the people. Okay. 
And we would not have a country but for the Bill of Rights. That was a compromise by which we got a lot of the states to sign on to it. So me, with regards to guns, um, I'm open to hearing dialogue on anything. I'm not saying that we, we couldn't use new gun laws. I was never endorsed by the NRA. Let me just interrupt to say yeah. you're sitting on the, if you win this, on the Illinois right. Supreme Court, not on the U.S. Supreme Court. Right. But do you turn, if you're on the court, and as a part of your analysis, dealing with a gun case, depends, but say an issue might be raised relative to that constitution and what it means, the Second Amendment. Do you turn and look and see what does the Second Amendment say? Or is that is that irrelevant to your analysis? No, oh, um, you, you would, you, a law has to be um, consistent with, with, with the United States the Constitution as well as the state Constitution. Yeah. Okay, so, right. it, it, so it's important. Right, absolutely. So you'd look at what the higher courts have said on that, what the, what the United States Supreme Court has said, because that's essentially the highest court in the land. That becomes the law of the land. And then, you know, Illinois, what, what we've said in the past and what's precedent. So I, I think these are areas that... Um, People have a right to be concerned, but it, it, you know, in the end, it becomes a balancing. We're not going to be able to do away with the Second Amendment absent um, the process by which we do away with an amendment. You know, two thirds of the right. Yeah. So we have that just to help people who may not know this. Not everybody's lawyer, and maybe they don't have to be to be well versed. The Second Amendment says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, shall not be infringed. Are you a textualist? Are you an originalist? Well, how do you interpret, how do you, how would you interpret that? Right. That if you were sitting on the U.S. Uh, on the U.S. Supreme Court, say, just hypothetically, well, would you be an originalist? Would you be a textualist? What would you Yeah, be? I don't like those, those um, what do you like? characterizations. Okay. I mean, like I said before, I'm a natural law theorist, but... Um, Textualists, you know, the, the First Amendment, do we have a right to say, yell fire in a crowded theater? No, of course not. Um, so you, there's always a balancing that goes in into uh, these amendments, and, you know, that's going to continue. That's always been. Okay, so cutting right to the chase. We're sort of in the theory land of yeah. so much time. Right. A lot of people know this. If they've been following July 4th in Highland Park, They've heard the words, the Illinois Firearms Restraining Order Act. They've heard about the police having been called to the home of the shooter three years before, and that the, they had been told about suicidal statements. They had been told threats to kill everyone. Right. Police knew all that. Highland right. Park Police knew right. all that. They then told others. They confiscated 16 guns. All that. Pretty much... It's not, it's, there's not been, we haven't gone to court. We don't have this as evidence, but people might think what I've just said is almost indisputable. We'll see. We'll see if people dispute it. But that's, that's sort of the background. And then the, and the, the, the uh, Illinois State Police, okay? The Brendan Kelly, the director of the Illinois State Police, Illinois State Patrol, whatever, ISP. Right. They knew about it. Yeah, he's this. the director. Under that, under that law that I cited, did you know, he could have filed a petition, right? The sheriff could. Right. The director of right. ISP. Various people have yes. if somebody in the family. They can go into court. Right. So this, uh, right as you mentioned, it. this. If you were there, do you think, what's your gestalt? Should something have happened here? Should somebody have gone to court? Should Kelly or maybe the state's attorney of Lake County? Looking back. No, absolutely. I, I think, what that, do you, you think? know, in hindsight, no question. The problem is, what are we prioritizing? You know, they have... Police out there, they have these racial profiling sheets that they have to fill out to, so that we know how many, um, you know, blacks, Asians, Latinos, what have you, they stopped. And, you know, the, it's very time consuming and okay, everything else. So, the, so, my point. My so the point is, yeah, guns and mental health should be a priority in terms of, of law enforcement. Right. And ultimately, we obviously, we didn't have enough checks and balances with regards to this. Somebody dropped the ball. Yeah, somebody should we find somebody out prioritize who, the wrong should things. We find out before we start legislating and changing things. Shouldn't you? Uh, you're, you're running for the only Supreme Court, right? Do you have a strong view that we had the law, we had the standard? You know, the standard yeah. is what? What's the so standard once, under the law so to what, determine whether there's an issue here? Tell me, what's the standard? So once again, you know, I, I can't make 
any comments with regards to how I potentially would rule on No, no, no. Issue. I'm just talking yeah. about how you would rule. I'm talking, tell me the law. Pretend, you've taught you've taught right. at the university college level. Right. You've taught con law courses to undergraduates. Yes. Tell me what you know about so, yeah, how, I mean, how this be the teacher. I, all right, be the so professor this particular here. act I'm yeah. not certain on. But my okay. my guess having uh, represented people on, and yeah. prosecuted people on a zillion similar acts is it's probably a preponderance standard and it's probably uh, the burden on the uh, government. Okay. So did he have, did Kelly have enough? Did the state's attorney have enough of Lake County? Did they have enough to go in and ask the court to say, make a finding that this kid's a clear and present danger? He's an imminent threat. Yeah, they're, Put they're, something in the record so maybe it goes in the background check information that comes out, and then that works. Somebody does a background check, this comes out. When he Three years later, when he tries to buy a gun, he can't. Right. But that didn't happen. When he tried to right. buy a gun, there was nothing there. Right. What the so hell went just, wrong here? So I mean, we, seriously. You, you got nothing wrong. Okay. But what I would say is that um, obviously— the uh, the ball's been dropped. I mean, there's got to be way more focus on this. And, and what what did we do wrong that allowed Highland Park to happen? So there's no question. We can't have we can't keep going down this road. You know, I mean, these are it's horrible the lives that were taken. It's horrible that this happened. But w what was specifically? And I haven't done a forensic on this yet. Should you know, we ban I, should we ban all assault weapons? Is that the answer? I mean, an assault weapon. That's like a silly term. Yeah, and I think some that, people. Wall Street Journal said a few years back. Difference between that and other guns is these are scarier. Yeah, I don't but know. They, what, I don't know. Response, what, so, what's yeah. your response to the Wall Street Journal on that? Is it just that they're so it, scarier? Or, yeah. So or I, I, I think that they here? consider anything that's not a revolver uh, an assault weapon. Then I mean that's just an absurdity. I mean nobody uses a revolver any even for personal protection anymore. So but cutting to the chase yeah. again. Hopefully. Revolver, maybe a shotgun. Is, Our is, concern is, here, yeah. perhaps your concern, a lot of people's concern, I should mm -hmm. say. What's a real danger here is when you have a rifle, AR-15, that's semi-automatic, and you had a high magazine capacity, you can knock out, as this kid did, like almost 90 bullets in like a minute or two, right? And these are bullets that they describe it. It doesn't just hurt you. It blows you up. Right. You almost can't right. recognize the person. Yeah, so I know. So what's going on? It's not, that's the point. Should... Well, how do we handle in society the ability of a person like this to go and get a gun that's going to shoot off ninety bullets in in uh, in, in in a minute or two? Right. But that's a little different than uh, I I admit any any death is is bad, but if you can do that much damage in a minute or two before any you can expect the police to get there. Right. That's a kind of a special problem with that weapon, is it not? Well, I, I mean, I could fire almost as quickly with the, you know, um, a nine millimeter, you know, I mean, it's not that much quicker and what have you. But um, the AR-15 and, and rifles of that sort have the scope that it's harder to miss, you know. But by the same token, these people are just mass, you know, they're just shooting at, at crowds. They're not even uh So if you weren't targeting. running for the court in a, in, in a minute— yeah. What's your policy recommendation to deal with this yeah, issue? Yeah, I think that the debate has to go on. I really do. I, I think there's a lot that needs to be said with regards to what needs to be done, and I, you know, the changes okay. need to be made. No question. Crime. What's your gestalt on crime? Everybody's talking about skyrocketing crime, especially in Chicago and Cook County, but perhaps in the five counties you're running in as well, right? Right. What's your gestalt? Well, what I would what say is done? that. Um, What's you your know, philosophy? Right. I mean, I was a longtime prosecutor, obviously. I'm not somebody that believes that the police can't uh, get better. I, I've said that a zillion times. I've seen it where, uh, you know, the, the, there's a code where oftentimes a rogue police officer, people will see him, they know he's bad, and yet they're afraid to say anything because of the consequences that may flow from talking about that police officer. They might not get backed up or one of their friends in the force might turn on them and what have you. So that's got to, we got to work through how, how do we stop that? Never been a supporter of, you know, Black Lives Matter, so to speak. Once again, I, I'm telling you my general thoughts. I'm not, this is not how I would yeah, yeah. rule on any People, case. General thoughts. Right. Um, but I think that some of these prosecutors that have taken the Soros money and that uh, are letting everybody out and, 
um, not prosecuting violent crimes the way they should, that they're a danger to America. But by the same token, people need to understand the role. The, that's the executive branch. The judiciary doesn't get to tell the executive branch how to run their office. You know, we may rule on cases that come before us, but if they want to let people out, typically we have no say in that. Yeah, but you they want to dismiss cases, nolly process case. But, they but, can do it and we can't do anything about it. It's helpful if you know the law, if you're sitting there on the Illinois Supreme Court. Tell me the general law. I know the issue of judges, trial judges in Circuit Court of Cook County, in Circuit Court of Lake County, in, Cir in DeKalb, in uh, Kendall County, in Kane, in right. the whole thing, McHenry right. County, right. your whole district. Yes. Judges are every, every day often making decisions about Put aside the so-called Safety Act, the yeah. new law that becomes effective. But right now they're making decisions about, hmm, this person has got a record here. They've told me that. This person right before me, he may be a dangerous career criminal. He may be a career criminal dangerous to society. Okay? Right. And, and, and somebody's saying here either they're not objecting to not detaining him or they're not pushing on that. What is the law? What is the general yeah. law? Don't tell me 30 factors. Right. What ultimately does a, does a, a trial judge, a bail court judge, yeah. what does he or she have to decide when it, he or she makes that decision currently under Illinois law? What does he have to decide should, in terms should he of the be penalties? Allowed to detain? Should, they, oh. should the state be allowed to detain this person pending trial or not? Right. So I'm not going to comment on that because those bail issues might come before me. And I, 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 I know, but really what, What's the current law? I'm just asking what's the current law. Right. Well, it, it's how it's being applied as well. But you know, Are there main factors that people look at? Or right. is, it, is it a blob that nobody knows? Right. The current law. I'm not right. saying what should the law be. Right. What is it? Right. Well, I mean, you, obviously you saw the General Assembly passed a law where most offenses now, they're not required to post bonds. So, um, you know. But isn't it the case that even under existing law, before this new law comes into effect, we'll see what that mm -hmm. is. Isn't it the case that if a judge decides that the person before him is a danger to society under the law, that person can re can re say that the state can detain them? The judge can stay. Historically, doesn't the, yes. Doesn't the current law? So, yeah, the, the way yeah, it, it yeah, yeah right, that? exactly. The judge looks at two factors. One is um, whether or not they're a flight risk. And uh, secondly, whether or not there's likely to commit a crime while out on bond. Right. So that's the law. That's the law. Okay. Somebody may come to you, a case may come to you right. with a new law, and then you have to decide. You right. can't tell me what that's right. going to be. Right. But what you just said now, that's not you right. deciding. That's no. what the law yeah. is, right? Totality of the circumstances, you know, making a ruling. You know, that we Is that going on now? Do you have an opinion as to from what you read in the media, what you see in the cases, what you know? Look, you've been practicing law privately for, what, eight years? Private, private private practice, right? You were a, a local, lot more than that. You were a local lawyer. prosecutor right. for state's attorney of, right. La of Lake County for how many years? Eight years. Eight years. Attor assistant attorney general for four years. Right. Special right? assistant sheriff for twelve years. Yeah. My gosh, you right. should know this stuff. Some would say, right, really cold, right? Yeah. And yet, some people say, some people say you're not a judge, so you're not qualified to sit on the court. What do you say to them? Well, we have members of the uh, people on the United States Supreme Court right now. We have at least one that, that was never sat as a judge before being appointed to the United States Supreme Court. We've had a history of that on the United States Supreme Court. You know, the first uh, Justice Marshall was not a judge before he became, you know, Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court. So we have a long history of, of people sitting on that that have not been judges. You know, secondly, you're really more, um, you're dealing with two things. One, you're dealing with, um, essentially administrative duties as a justice on the uh, Illinois Supreme Court. And secondly, you're ruling on constitutionality of these issues. And that's not something that trial judges do. I mean, very, very rare with, are they ruling uh, on what a lower court did. So that, not doing their, well, they, they, can, they might rule on constitutionality to the extent that they could say whether or not that violates the Fourth Amendment and therefore we're going to pitch it. But they don't rule to the extent that they're they're looking at what lower courts have done, and I've I've studied the Constitution and know it as well as anybody. So I'm not, I put my my experience and my uh, knowledge right there with anyone. Okay, and so um, so you're comfortable and confident sitting on the Supreme Court. 
you can put the, a lot of these personal views that you've told me about today, which I think are important for people to understand. Right. You haven't told me how you'd rule, but right. you've told me your personal right. views. You've told me what you know about the law. You've told me your background. Right. So you're not, you don't lack in confidence that if you're on, if you are oh, elected no. Yeah, no. to the Illinois no. Supreme Court, no. you can be impartial. Right. And you can have the so background So I've constitutional necessary. law for many years, absolutely. Okay. And, and, and again, the five counties, what are those five counties? Lake, McHenry, Kane, Kendall, and DeKalb. If they live in those counties and they're registered to vote, they can vote for you. They can vote for Mark C. Kern Jr. as the name appears on the ballot, uh, Republican for uh, Where do they Supreme find out Court. more about you? On they, what website? Uh, we know Mark. We'll direct him as one in Mark for court. It's easy to remember. We know yeah, Mark. We know Mark. And that's the, the point of that is a lot of what you're asking me, I've already been telling people what I believe about things for, you know, a lot of years, decades now. So there's, there's, uh, your you're not going to find anyone that where they, they'll get more Google hits on than me. That's for sure. You don't hide your views. No. You'll come back and right, tell us more right, detail. You'll right, come back here right. before yeah, of November, course, right? Of course, of course. And I, it's always that caveat though, that, you know, I don't know how I'm going to rule on any issue and I'm not going down that road right now. Right. I don't want to know how I'm going to, how I'm going to rule on any issue. I, I would want to have an open mind and be fair okay. and impartial. You heard it here, Mark Curran running for the Illinois Supreme Court, 2nd District. Uh, November 8 is the election. So you think about it. You decide what to do. Come back before because we hope to get Mark back. Maybe we'll have his opponent back. Have the other justice. Have uh, Justice Michael Burke, who's running in the 3rd. Public Affairs, your source for information. We discuss the Unison.